Aperture. So my name is Todd Seeley. I've been a Brooklyn-based photographer for the past 19 years. Uh, and in that time, I've shot a pretty wide variety of things. So some of the things I've shot are, for example, the Brooklyn DIY music scene in the 2000s, uh, a lot of underground New York nightlife, uh, went bicycle touring on tall bikes. Uh, there is an artist-made junk raft voyage that we'll get into later. Um, and then just a lot of different festivals, Burning Man, Gathering of the Juggalos, things like that. Uh, just the past couple weekends, I was out shooting, um, if anyone's heard of Old Cella, it's Coachella, but with like the Rolling Stones and Bob Dylan, uh, Neil Young. And uh, just before that, I was at a Mad Max themed festival out in the desert. So I moved to New York City in 1997 to attend Pratt Institute for Sculpture, and I eventually switched to photography. My early sculpture work had been leading the direction of James Terrell and Robert Irwin, who both used light as a way to create installations. Uh, so there's a bit of a duality when I switched to also using light to create work, but just in a very different way. After school, I took a desk job, uh, and I would go out shooting on the night and on the weekends. Um, and after a few years, I was traveling in Brazil, and I was kidnapped at gunpoint for taking photos. Um, so I was eventually let go, obviously. Uh, but it brought a lot of things into focus. And one of those things was, you know, if I was busy taking photos and that was my priority, why was I sitting behind a desk most of the year? So I quit. Uh, when I first moved to New York, uh, I met a lot of people who I've collaborated with over the years. And one person in particular was the artist Swoon. Uh, she's a street artist known for her wheat-pasted, large-scale, hand-carved uh, pieces, mostly of portraits uh, that often like morph into designs and uh, architecture. She was a very energetic girl, fresh from Florida when we met, um, and she had a lot of big ideas. Uh, one of those ideas was later on with a dozen friends and strangers, we would travel down various rivers and even the Adriatic Sea on art rafts. Uh, these were made from salvage materials. Um, there was uh, two years on the Mississippi, one year on the Hudson, and then one year on the Adriatic. The projects were called the Miss Rockaway Armada and the Swimming Cities. The rafts were actually recently exhibited at the Brooklyn Museum, uh, was it? not this summer, but last summer. Um, uh, we continued to work together on a project in Haiti, building earth domes, and then also a project in New Orleans uh, with musical architectural houses. So when I'm shooting, my goal is to try and make photographs seem as much like it was to be there as possible. Um, if there's a throbbing crowd and things flying through the air and explosions, I want it to feel like that. Having that focus and that instinct really guides me as far as what to shoot, uh, where to be in a situation, and how to capture things. When I was recently uh, covering the RNC, or the Republican National Convention, um, it was almost comically clear that there was an overabundance of photojournalists on the street hunting for a handful of scarce protesters. Um, in my coverage, I included shots that highlighted that reality, even if that was essentially pulling back the curtain on the story the press wanted to tell. Um, the reality is that in the end, it's up to me, your editor, to decide if those images even see the light of day. Another important aspect of what I'm trying to capture um, is that I well, when I'm trying to capture images in general, is I don't digitally manipulate the images beyond what you could do in a traditional darkroom. Uh, brightness, contrast. Uh, occasionally there's a job that does require digital manipulation, but for the most part, I try to focus on the naturally occurring reality and show that reality as amazing as it is. With photojournalism, photojournalism that's a given, um, but I feel that way about when I'm shooting my personal work as well. And when I'm shooting my personal work, I don't use a project-based approach. Uh, where I select a subject and shoot it for a month or over a year. Uh, I pretty much just photograph the events that I'm a part of, the people I'm around, and the things I, surrounded, I find myself surrounded by day by day. Uh, most of the photographers that have been major influences for me have worked similarly. Uh, William Eggleston, Nan Golden, Joel Sternfeld, Lee Friedlander. Uh, this sometimes creates odd bedfellows of stoic landscapes coupled with energetic crowds. Uh, but searching for the relationships in these things and how they create a larger story is mainly what fascinates me. A strong sense of narrative has always been the hallmark of great photography, not only for my own personal taste, but also what I think stands the test of time. In late 2013, I published a book of photos from my time in New York City. It's titled Bright Nights, Photographs of Another New York. The guiding principle for this book was that every image in the book had to have been taken in the five boroughs, and that was about it. Probably the greatest influence for me sorry, while envisioning the layout and execution of the book was The Ballad of Sexual Dependency by Nan Golden. Her photos are an excellent example of a strong narrative combined with an amazingly intense emotion. There's also the mild correlation that the fact that we were both shooting 
uh, photographs in New York City of our lives, um, albeit with very different approaches. Golden's work has a very strong sense of her presence in every image. Uh, while my work, I actively strive to minimize my footprint as much as possible. I want you to see what I see, but you don't need to see me to be able to get there. Um, one unexpected side effect that I discovered while working on this book was that the emotional toll was far greater than I expected. You end up being forced to relive, in this case, the past 15 years of your life. Uh, the painful breakups, the friends you had a falling out with, um, people who had passed away. So it, at the same time, the chaos and the excitement are really inherent and interesting parts of New York City. And that's what has kept me living here and coming back here for so long. Uh, I find it also attracts other people who appreciate these qualities as well. And it in turn creates a place that fosters and incubates the very thing that draws us here. Uh, I know this is most likely a very skewed view, but it seems to me that New York City is the best place to find people who are doing what they want to because they feel compelled to, and not necessarily because they have motives or agendas or make money off of it. It's also a place where people do things with no excuses or apologies either. Uh, this was during um, post-Hurricane Sandy blackout in Lower Manhattan. I've recently been spending a lot of my time in Southern California. Um, in uh, 2015, I created a new series focusing on that region uh, called Outland Empire. It was a result of a residency program in LA that culminated in a traveling solo show and a limited edition monograph. One of the most common questions I get uh, in general, is how did you end up there? As I mentioned, uh, I met a lot of really amazing people early on in New York, um, and not only have those friendships helped by providing community and support over the years, but also frequently we band together to help each other pull off larger projects than maybe one or two people could do. I've always tried to be a contributing participant as much as a documenter. Whether it's building and crewing junk rafts, scheming and working behind the scenes, uh, on events in abandoned spaces, or just working as a roadie with a touring band, I've always felt it's important to be a contributor to the greater goal. I mean, sometimes that means you miss photographing great moments, but if it's your job to steer the raft, you can't really be jumping away because of something photogenic. Uh, not only is being a contributor to the general things that are happening something I want to do for its own sake, but it also helps you document, since you're around a lot more. When I worked as a photojournalist, I often show up for something, shoot until it's over, and then head off to edit and file. Uh, when you're part of the group doing the thing, you aren't punching a clock. So you see the in-between moments, you have a better understanding of the occasions and relationships that you witness. You create richer work because you have an insight that doesn't come easily. I occasionally get asked an awkward question of what I'm trying to say with my photographs. And I feel less like I'm trying to make a narrow declarative statement, and more that I hope to inspire people to be ambitious with what they want to do. There's a shared pivotal moment that a lot of people I know all have experienced, and there are different variations, but for me, it was the first punk show that I went to. Uh, you saw this whole culture of people independently figuring out what they want to do and just doing it. No concept of limitations, not waiting for permission. It's that moment when you realize the world and your options are so much bigger than you thought, that you don't have to follow the predetermined path laid out by example around you. On a certain level, I hope my photographs and what they depict can be similarly helpful in opening up people's ideas for what their options are. There was an event recently in New York, or a couple years ago now, that I, sums up a lot of things for me. And some friends of mine uh, found an abandoned water tower in Manhattan and built a speakeasy inside of it. And then ran the speakeasy on the ends for, I think it was about six weeks. And the, the question that we struggled with when starting it up was, well, besides how to get all the pianos up there, was um, how, do you, how do you invite people to something like this? The building is abandoned, it's a lot of trespassing, you could get caught. So how do you bring new people, like not just your friends to this, and, but like, you know, don't bring people that are gonna blow the spot up. So we ended up with this six degrees of separation approach, uh, where we had these little pocket watches with directions on the inside of a phone number to call and get directions. And um, they, uh, you would come to the, to the evening, everything was free, and then you'd be given a pocket watch and you'd be allowed to give that as a gift to someone else. So the first group was like the incubator or the starter group and we just kind of let it go from there. And so over six weeks with three seatings per night, three nights a, a weekend, um, 
it was an amazing group of people that came through. Um, there were some celebrities. There was one night, I guess, Amanda Palmer showed up and did a show. Um, and this is in a tiny, tiny little wooden water tower. Um, but to me, it was, I don't know, it was just a very perfect example of one of the things about New York that's really amazing. Um, and one of the things about, you can be a photographer and a documenter, but you can also be more than that. Um, and so helping build, helping run it, uh, helping keep the secret. Uh, these are all just as important sometimes as taking the photos. Uh, but that's it. Thanks for coming. <laughs>